What up folks, Alex here, welcome to Mr. Alex Tech, and this week we've got something just a little bit different because we've got a special guest. You see, my weakest area within DaVinci Resolve is on the color tab. I just don't know quite enough about it. Fortunately, I know a man that does, and his name is Darren Mostyn. Now, Darren is a professional editor and colorist. He's been working in the industry for 25 plus years, and he's worked with some really big names like the BBC. He's also just started his own YouTube channel, which I've linked down in the description below. He's only been up for a few weeks, but he's already made some really great DaVinci Resolve tutorials, looking at the edit page, and most predominantly, the color page. Now I had a really great chat with Darren earlier in the week and we thought it'd be a cool idea if he came on the channel and showed you some of his favourite quick top tips when working on the colour tab. So that's enough from me for this week. I'm going to pass you over to Darren and he'll take it from here. What up folks, my name's Darren Mostyn and I just want to say a huge thank you to Alex for inviting me onto his channel to do a 5 Minute Friday. What I'm going to do is look at an episode that I did a few weeks ago on my channel which was looking at grading the Sony A7S III footage. So I'm going to elaborate on that a little bit, show you some nice colour grading tips and techniques and uh, let's take a look shall we? So this footage is from the A7S III and this was a, a grade that I built for an episode a few weeks ago called How to Grade Sony A7S III. So you can have a watch of that episode, it shows you node by node how I built up this look from this to this using this exact node tree. And I've now brought in a second shot and I've just started to do a little bit of work on it just to try and get it balanced. And apart from the waveform, there's another tool that can help me just check that the white balance is good. And if you right click in here and say show picker RGB value, then your qualifier gives you the exact RGB value of the pixel that you're sitting on. Make sure you're on the qualifier mode. And so as I sit on his t-shirt here, you see that I've got 222, 226, 223. So that's a good white balance. And I can see that on the waveform as well. And if I come to this side, you'll see that blue is slightly dominant in this. So the white balance is slightly cooler. And again, I can see that on the waveform. So it's just a really handy tool. That's the RGB picker. Okay, so I've got my base grade down now and I want to actually match this shot to this shot. So there's several things I can do to help that. Um, firstly, I could just try and copy the whole grade. If you middle mouse click on any icon, it will copy and paste the grade. And you can see that quite clearly doesn't work. So I'm gonna undo that straight away. And what I'm gonna do is take this shot I'm going to grab as a still, so just right click in the middle here and say grab still. And what I really want to do is just take bits of this grade and apply it to the second shot. I've already done the sort of base grade on there, so it's pretty close. I just want to get some of the more detailed work and copy it across to save me having to rebuild it. So for example, this node here, the highlight node, was actually quite a lot of work, so it's quite precise. So I'm going to click on the shot. I'm going to right hand click in here and I'm going to say display node graph. And what you'll see then is the node tree inside this graph. So I can now select any element from here and drag it over. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can either drag literally and drop. You see the plus arrow, let go and that goes in. If I undo that, another way of doing it is just say add a node and just drag and drop it onto the node. And if I drag and drop any of these on to an existing node, it will overwrite the properties of that node. So it's a really useful tool. So I get a lot of comments from people wanting to see the open effects in a bit more detail. So I'm going to show you one now that I use a fair bit. Let's go back to this guy here. And on this node here, we basically did quite a bit of work on the skin tones. So I'll just show you before and after. So we took all this sort of pinkiness out. And we also did a little bit of mid-tone detail to help his eye bags here. But I'm going to go one step further than that. So what I'm going to do is add a serial node next to this one. So Alt-S. And what I want to do is key the skin exactly the same as this shot here. So I could go ahead and re-qualify that, or I can just take the key that I've already done here and pass it through to this node. So I'm just gonna join those two, so that's key out to key in. And I've now got the same qualification on the second node. So let's open the effects. And I'm gonna take this one called Color Compressor and drag and drop it onto that new node. Now, when I'm working in the open effects, I very often work in this mode. So it's shift and F. And what you get is a nice big screen, but you still can see your OpenFX tools. So it's a really convenient way of working. And you can put your node tree back on here as well if you want to. So what does this do? Basically, this is going to try and compress the color to become a certain color. So what I can do is take this tool here. I'm gonna sample the skin color that I want it to be in the end. So let's just take that there. So there's our value. And now when I compress hue, saturation, and luminance individually, they are basically trying to get so in this case, I'm trying to get the hue to match that color. I'm trying to get the saturation to match that color. 
And on this one, I'm trying to get the luminance to match that color. So you can see extreme what happens. I mean, if I go really extreme, it looks ridiculous. Um, so luminance is the one that causes the most damage. So be really careful in luminance, if at all. And you just want to play with these sliders. And we can switch that on and off here. And that's just smoothing out a bit of that red for me. And I'm just going to blend it back. I always put a bit of blend in on this tool. It can look really plasticky if you don't use it carefully. So again, sparingly is, is the way to go with this. And uh, that's looking pretty good. So let's bring back our nodes and get rid of the open effects for now. And I just want to label this node. So traditionally, right hand click and say node label. But I did quite a lot of node labeling. So I'm going to assign it as a keyboard shortcut. So in here, we go to keyboard customization. And if you go to the all commands here and just type in here label, and it's under the node section here. And all you've got to do is double click in here and then assign the key. So I'm gonna assign it to the tab key, which is currently empty. So just press tab, press save, and that's done. So now click on here. If I press my tab key, I can just type in here CC for color compress. Okay, so you see on here on the end, we've got a vignette. So I'll just switch that on and off so you can see it's quite subtle, but I use vignettes quite a lot. So what I want to do is actually save this as what's called a shared node. So if I right hand click on here and say save a shared node, it now wants a new name in here. So we can now use our tab key as our label because we've just assigned that. So I'm going to press that. I'm going to call this vignette. I'll call it vignette soft and say okay. And that is now a shared node. So if I go onto this shot here, what I can do is to add another node, I can right hand click and say add node. But this time I've got the choice of the shared nodes as well. So there's my vignette soft. And if I press this one, it adds a new node with that vignette softness already on it. So that's quick and easy to do. Just be careful though, because the node is locked. So any changes you want to make, you can have to right click and deselect the tick box there. Now it's free to use, so I can make any changes I want. But any change I make to this shared node will affect all the other times I've used this particular shared node in the timeline. So just be careful of that. But shared nodes are really nice and quick and easy. And that's it for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments if you did, if you learned anything. If you want to see more of this style of video, I can approach lots of different people and see if I can get them on the channel to do some interesting stuff. If you did enjoy it, thumbs up, any comments or other feedback, shove them down below. And if you're new here, you enjoyed the video, you want to see a bit more, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks ever so much for watching, folks. Take it easy. I'll see you next time. See ya.